Focus Otters, what is up? Michael Leando back again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about how we can take a serverless contact form built out completely with the UI in front end Amplify, and then we take in the back end built with AppSync, combine it all together, and now we have a working solution. Now, I hear you. You might be thinking, Michael, we already built this. In fact, I have a blog and a video showcasing just that. Amplify has actually come out with some improvements in the extensibility aspect, so don't go. Definitely check out this video. That way you get the new updated with the latest uh, best practices, scenarios. That way you can take your application and just build it out that much easier. So if that looks good to you, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so as we dive in here, I do wanna let you know I'm taking in your feedback. And a lot of you have been asking for uh, repos. So I wanna let you know that we have that listed here. We have this amplified contact form. I'll link that in the description, but all the projects are gonna be living under this focus otter org that you see here on the left. As far as the repo itself or the project that we're gonna be building rather, uh, we have this contact form. And if you checked out the last video, you saw how I built out this front end using the Amplify React components uh, with a lot of the React primitives that we have going on. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how we can take this application here where I can say something like Focus Otter, uh, throw in my email, there we go. And then we can put in some text. And when I hit send message, you get all these details here. We wanna go ahead and take that and send it over to a backend. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, a quick little overview of the architecture that we're dealing with. You just saw the front end. And then as far as the back end is concerned, we're going to have an API key uh, set up as a security model over our AppSync API. Note that we're using GraphQL and not REST. Uh, now this is gonna manage all of the contact form information that's gonna be coming in through our form. This API is gonna go ahead and store those details in DynamoDB that's going to trigger a Lambda function, which is then going to send off an email, letting us know, okay, we have a customer that's interested in our products, wants to go ahead and give us some details or has some kind of inquiry, whatever the use case may be. All right, so what does the code look like and how are we gonna get started? Okay, so this project is scaffolded with Create React App. So what I'm going to do is say Amplify init, and this is going to initialize my project for uh, React. Now by default, it knows all about how to configure itself with Create React App. So I'm actually gonna hit enter here through a lot of the defaults. Note that it knows what my application looks like. I'm just gonna bump this up a little bit for you. And the configuration looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to say yes. From here, it's asking me, you know, what do I prefer, a profile or keys? A profile is what we have, and I'm using the Focus Auto Dev account. And that's pretty much it. It's gonna initialize itself. We've been through this a couple of times if you checked out the other videos. So I'm gonna let that do its thing close the terminal, and then now we can really just focus on this index file where I can bring in Amplify. Easy enough, we're gonna import Amplify from Amplify, and then we will put in our Amplify.configure, giving it the exports file that gets generated. All right, we got that set up. I brought up my file editor just to show you that that exports file is what gets generated when we initialize our project. We don't have anything listed in here of importance just yet, just really the region that we're working with. So this is really the only time I'm gonna be showing this because down the road, it'll contain all of our secrets. So let's add in our first service here. Uh, this rest of the part is actually gonna move by pretty quickly where I can say, let's get rid of this terminal and we might as well just shut it down from here as well and move that to the side. So amplify add API. And this is where we're gonna be adding our AppSync API into our project. So this is going to say GraphQL, and then it's asked me what kind of API and what kind of mode do I want to set up. Uh, we are using the default authorization, the name is fine, and we don't wanna have conflict detection. We can talk about that in another video, but really it's gonna be this single object. And I do wanna edit the schema now in VS Code. So I'll do that. It'll bring over all of this. So let's switch this up to something that's more realistic for our use case. Okay, so once we get our candidate set up, this is pretty much what we're left with. Uh, we have this app model that's of course gonna create our database. And then as far as the authorization is concerned, uh, we have an API key, which gets generated by specifying allow public. And then we dictate what that API key uh, basically permits. So we have these operations, meaning they can basically create themselves inside of our DynamoDB table. 
each candidate gets a unique ID, and then we're storing these attributes, which actually correspond to the form that we have set up in our application. So this is looking pretty good. Note that we are making sure at an API level, not just the front end level, that an email comes through. It has to be an actual uh, email format instead of some kind of arbitrary string. So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out. And now we can get into the next part of our application, which is when a candidate gets submitted, they're gonna be put into our database with this schema. That part's working just fine. But what happens afterwards? Well, essentially we want a function to be triggered. So I'm gonna say amplify add function. That way it's gonna be in charge of sending off the email. So with that command in place, let's go ahead and say, yeah, we do want a serverless function here. Uh, an amplify contact form, yada, 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 that works fine. Node.js is good. Now note that we have some templates that we can work with here, right? Uh, the one that we wanna have is going to be this Lambda trigger because it's going to be triggered whenever something gets added to our DynamoDB table. So Lambda trigger for DynamoDB. And then we get the option to use a new DynamoDB table, one set up in our AWS account, or one that was created via GraphQL. Now, of course, this is the one that we want in our application. So we'll go ahead and select that one right there. Now, when we do, it notices that we only have the one table selected uh, or rather created so that it automatically selects that for us. Now, it's asking if we want to configure any advanced settings. Uh, we actually don't need to in this part of our application. So I'm going to select no here. And then do we want to edit the function? Yes, we do. And again, in VS Code. So I'm going to hit enter in our terminal one more. It's going to go ahead and set up our application. And this just means that we can close this out. Now the blog post that I uh, go into and that I'll link to in the description actually goes through all the code that we need and gives some detail on it. So I'm actually going to paste in exactly what we need here. Now, one of the cool things is that we do get the types for our Lambda here, uh, but that actually isn't too relevant because we have all the code already. So we're going to bring in the AWS SDK. Uh, from that, we're going to pull off the SES module. And then just recall that as items get put onto our DynamoDB table, it's a lot more efficient if those items get bashed and sent in as a stream of records. So whenever we have a stream, we're working with an array, which is why we get this array.records here. And there are a couple of tweaks that I want to make since this is coming from the blog post. Uh, in the addition of a name and email, we do have a candidate message. So I'll switch that over like that. And then this is going to be name, email, and message. From here, uh, we have my name is, candidate name, put in one more space, and then we can also put in their message right here. All right, this is looking pretty good. The one thing I'm noticing is that I'm just missing a curly brace. So I'll add that at the end. And this is essentially all we need inside of our Lambda function. Now, one of the things that differs and why this video needed to be updated is because we don't need to uh, open up any CloudFormation templates to add permissions. Instead, uh, we can go ahead and add those permissions in a file that gets created by Amplify. So when we created this Lambda function, essentially a uh, custom policies file got created for us. And let's open up our file system and just take a look at what that means here. So here's our function. It's inside of this directory. And then we also have this custom policies.json file. If I click on that, this will let me inline any policy that I want to add. So if I switch this up with this code right here, now I can go ahead and have a policy without having to mess with the CloudFormation template. This just gives our function the ability to call the send email API uh, with the allow permission and then the ARN statement. Note that we also support wildcards. So that way I can say, uh, I don't want to hard code the region and I definitely don't want to hard code my AWS account number. Uh, but in this case, I can go ahead and put in the email address that I want to use for my account. Now you might be wondering where does this email address come from and how do I get that set up as an identity? Well, if we head over to the AWS console, you'll notice that over here, uh, we have within the console, the AWS SES. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we can create an identity right over here. Once I click on create identity, we have the email address and I can type in uh, my email address that I'm using, just like that. Then once I click on create identity, it's going to create it in such a way that I have to verify the email that I'm entering in here, of course. So once you verify that email, you'll be all set to go. Okay, so back in our application, uh, we're pretty much all set to go ahead and push this up and test it out. 
the one thing we want to do is set up our front end so that way it has the ability to make these calls. We want to go ahead and publish those values uh, with our GraphQL API. So instead of logging this out, or in addition to, since this is an async function, we can go ahead and paste in something that looks like this. Now there's a couple of things going on here. One, we're missing our message. So we'll say message just like that. But then it's also like, hey, we don't know anything about this API or create candidate function that you have here. So what that means is right up above, we can import API from AWS Amplify. But we still need to be able to get this uh, create candidate function created for us. So I'm going to say import create candidate, and it doesn't really know where that's coming from. So we're just going to say from, and then we'll put in some kind of question marks right here. Now with this out of the way, let's go ahead and push up our application using Amplify Push. Now again, if you've seen any of my videos before, I'm gonna go ahead and push this up, accept the generated table that verifies everything that we created. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and test this out within our application. So let me fast forward until we get to that part. All right, so I just got done building. Note that I did have a push error. One of the things that I did was I didn't have this listed as an array. I went ahead and I switched that. So if you got a similar build error, uh, that was just my bad again on copy and pasting. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out is that we do have this process.env.ses email. This is kind of nice, a nice sugar that I had in my function. That way, uh, we don't have to specify uh, the actual hard-coded email that we're using within AWS. Now, if you want to get that same functionality, uh, Amplify supports that out of the box by simply running Amplify update function. And selecting the option to add an environment variable is going to be one of the key resources uh, within there. All right, so with this out of the way, let's go ahead and check out our application and let's start building out the front end to be able to push to our back end. So over in our app.js file, we do have one question to answer, which is where is this create candidate coming from? Now I went ahead and opened up my file explorer so that way we can see that we have this newly generated GraphQL folder. Inside of here, we have our mutations and our queries. I'm gonna open up the mutation and there is create candidate right there. So just by importing this, from dot slash GraphQL, we have access to it. Perfect, so that's pretty much all we need right there. The last step that we have is to take these and clean them up so that way uh, these named properties are actually accessing the respective values. So we have that set up. Let's go ahead and test out the application by opening up our terminal one more time, clearing everything out, and then running npm start. Okay, so I have our dev tools opened up. Let's go ahead and test this out here. I'm gonna say that my name is Michael Leando. Uh, give him my email, there we go. I'll just give it a Gmail account. Oh, thanks, one password. And then we can just say, hey, just wanted some new information. Just like so. Now, when I click on send message here, uh, note that we got a 200 from GraphQL. That's looking great. And then any moment now, we should be getting an email. So let's go ahead and check out my email to see if it just came in. And there you go. My name is Michael Leando. You can reach me at mtleando at gmail.com. And then we also have the message that we created. And note that because we're using template strings within JavaScript, uh, we have that indentation and all that stuff automatically um, getting applied, line breaks, etc. So that's it for this video. Thanks again. And if you enjoyed this solution, definitely consider liking, subscribing, sharing the video. It really helps out the channel a lot, especially as I'm chasing down 1000 subscribers. It's going to be a big year in 2022. And I look forward to having all of your wonderful faces along for the journey. Catch you all next time. Peace.